Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alumni Association of the City College of New York's 140th Annual Alumni Gala. Your host for the evening, Mr. Sean Chin Chance, Secretary of the Board of Directors and President of the Political Science Affiliate. Good evening. Welcome alumni, family members, college faculty, staff, friends, and community members. Welcome to the Alumni Association of the City College of New York 140th Annual Gala. I am Sean Chin Chance, Class of 2005, President of the Political Science Affiliate and Board Secretary of the Alumni Association. As you can see, I am on the college's North Campus in front of Shepherd Hall at 139th and Convent. The statue of General Alexander Webb, the college's second president and noted Civil War general, stands right there. And surrounding me are five of the original buildings designed by George Brown Post in Neo-Gothic style. All landmark buildings. There's no other campus quite like ours. Tonight, we carry on a 140-year-old tradition. Since 1880, this alumni association has gathered alumni annually to break bread together and to raise a glass in honor of fellow alumni and their achievements. Despite unprecedented circumstances and restrictions on large gatherings, we knew that it was even more important now than ever to connect with one another. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those affected by this virus. We are stronger together, so pour a beverage, order your takeout, get comfortable, and enjoy tonight's show. Tonight we celebrate seven incredible graduates who've gone on from city to achieve their dreams. Our honorees are Dr. J. Cherie Allen, class of 2011, Rada Blank, class of 1997, Charles Copeland, class of 1968, Bob Friedman, class of 1962, Jeff Levine, class of 1975, Herbert Rubin, class of 1938, and Lev Sverdov, class of 2005. They are proof, like you, that CCNY is a dream machine. We also salute tonight Joe Namath. Broadway Joe is here with the Finley Award. And we also present posthumously Finley Awards to the incredible New York City journalists Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill. As we make our way to tonight's program, please remember to donate to the Alumni Association. Help us accomplish our mission of supporting and engaging alumni and current students while continuing to promote this great college we call alma mater. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll find an opportunity to learn more about our organization, suggested donation levels, and links to our silent auction. If you've never taken part in a mobile bid, silent auction before, be sure to check out the instructions on how to bid. And keep in mind that the bidding has been live for a week. It ends tonight at 8 p.m. Keep watching, of course but I suggest you open a new tab in your browser to bid while you watch so you don't miss out on any of our great auction items. Now before we jump into our program, let's take advantage of being here on the North Campus and visit one of my favorite rooms ever, the Great Hall. Let's go. The historic Great Hall, located in Shepherd Hall, is unforgettable with the stained glass windows and marble columns that rise to a height of 65 feet. This cathedral-like venue is the crown jewel of the City College of New York, hosting banquets, graduations, and conferences. Edwin H. Blashfield's mural, titled The Graduate, looks over the hall, depicting the passing of wisdom from the alma mater onto a young scholar. I can't think of a more appropriate place for me to introduce you to our Alumni Association President, Gary Kelnick. Gary has had a distinguished career in public service. A product of New York City Public Schools, a graduate of City College, Gary co-chaired one of the largest New York City Labor Management Quality of Work Life programs. So ladies and gentlemen, Gary Kelnick.
Good evening, and welcome to the Alumni Association's first virtual gala, which is the 140th annual alumni event. Special greetings are extended to Vince Boudreau, 13th President of the City College of New York. This year, we have three Finley Award recipients. In addition, there are seven Townsend Harris medalists this evening. This evening, I'm particularly pleased as president of the Alumni Association to greet and embrace you collectively. On behalf of the executive committee, our board of directors, past alumni presidents, plus current affiliate and chapter presidents, former Townsend Harris medalists, as well as association staff. My comments this evening are more serious this year than usual because 2020 has been an extraordinary challenging and difficult year for the world, the United States, New York State, New York City, CCNY, and our Alumni Association. Regionally, as residents of New York State, Connecticut, and New Jersey, we found ourselves as the U.S. COVID-19 epicenter this past March. Our lives were and remain upended with record infections, hospitalizations, tragically skyrocketing deaths, and widespread economic hardship. Special gratitude continues to be due to the extraordinary effort of our healthcare professionals, hospital support staff, first responders, and other essential workers. However, you, our fellow citizens, the unsung heroes and heroines, are responsible for reducing the community spread through consistently wearing masks, social distancing, and performing increased hand hygiene. Given the current spike, we must continue to stay the course. We know what worked before. COVID-19 fatigue is not an option. Concurrent with the pandemic, we consistently were confronted with the unresolved social justice issues that occur throughout the nation and have fueled the multi-ethnic and multi-generational protests, highlighting documented abusive law enforcement behavior and unnecessary and senseless citizen murders in police custody. On a separate issue, as compassionate individuals, the majority of us agonized during this year over the disgraceful and unconscionable separation of children from their parents attempting to immigrate to the United States. This is not being political. Everyone is entitled to their opinion on immigration. However, there is no room or tolerance to use children, some of whom are infants, as pawns. This is a stain on our nation, an obligation on all responsible citizens to support corrective action, to reunite the 545 children still remaining separated from their parents. We ask that all of you join us and keep our fellow alums in the Midwest and West Coast states impacted by the horrendous fires that have destroyed their homes and communities in your thoughts and prayers. We also want to acknowledge and express our appreciation to the Alumni Association staff 
headed by David Covington, Executive Director for the continuous efforts on behalf of the Association during 2020, especially under these challenging and unusual circumstances. The program you will view this evening is the product of their efforts. When a 2020 in-person gala was not practical, they pivoted to exploring new territory with the virtual experience. Special thanks is also due to Ellen and Elaine Golden, directors and program committee co-chairs, to Jack Lee, Kaiwen Ding, plus other members of the Asian Alumni Affiliate for their special outreach efforts to the association members to promote this evening. Gratitude is also due to Anne Mancuso, a former association president, plus Andrew McGowan, both from the Communication Alumni Affiliate for editing the Gala Journal and script. Finally, thank you, our members, the families of the recipients, the colleagues and friends for your participation and financial support to this evening. We look forward to the Alumni Association being able to host an in-person gala in 2021 when the vaccine has been approved, the efficacy validated by the independent scientists and embraced by fellow citizens. Until then, we have to continue doing our part. Go Beefers, and thank you for your attention. I return you to our Master of Ceremony, Sean Chin Chans, and please enjoy yourself. Thank you, Gary. As always, looking very dapper tonight. Thank you, Sean. You likewise. I am pleased to introduce now the president of the City College of New York, Dr. Vincent Boudreau. Interesting fact, Dr. Boudreau was my advisor while I was in college, and today I call him my friend. Dr. Boudreau is the former dean of the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership and is a specialist in politics of social movements, particularly in Southeast Asia. Vince, we are so pleased you are with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Vincent Boudreau. Thank you, Sean. You know, it's no secret that we are filming these segments ahead of time and, and assembling them for the gala itself. But knowing Sean, I can say without fear of contradiction, you look good tonight. I'm really thrilled to be able to be with you tonight to share the first online Alumni Association Gala and to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about how the campus is doing. I've been on campus really since March watched as we went virtually overnight from a place where all of our instruction took place face to face to where we are now where 97.5 percent of our classes are offered online i watched staff and faculty think deeply and work hard to deliver support and education to students online and i watched students struggle but succeed in the struggle of learning how to learn virtual environment. And we did all of that because we knew how essential it was not to lose a generation of students to this pandemic. We've also been thinking really carefully about the role of City College in the public sphere and how we can take the knowledge and resources we have on this campus and turn it to the betterment of, of, of society, particularly under the conditions of the pandemic. So we have had uh, architects and engineers and scientists working to produce PPE equipment for first responders. Some of our laboratories uh, turned over their operation to the production of um, sterile environments for testing. Um, and we have scientists working in labs to produce a vaccine for COVID-19. In all these ways and in other ways, we have taken the resources of CCMI and made them available publicly. Uh, our drama department, for instance, has just produced its first fully online, publicly available play. And our radio station from the very beginning 
had turned itself over to public service broadcasting. So in all of these different ways, as an institution, your alma mater rose to the occasion. These are difficult times, and, and we are not out of the woods yet as far as the pandemic is concerned. It is likely that the spring will look very much like this semester looked, with most of our classes online. And it will be a struggle for us as an institution, as faculty and staff, and as individual students. Now, I know struggle is not new to City College alumni. I've met with enough of you, heard enough of your stories to hear time and again how the students of the 1940s and 50s and 60s and 70s and today struggled with food insecurity, tried to figure out how to put, keep body and soul together as they attended CCMY. Um, today, how students struggle to make tuition payments. We've observed, by the way, that under conditions of pandemic, as we meet students that are in situations of hardship, one of the first things they do is they pay their city college tuition and then worry about rent and food. That's how important their education is to them, as it was to you. And so knowing how we do with struggle, I'm confident that as an institution, we will come through this crisis. You know, in 1847, when the founders of City College decided to establish an institution for the whole people, they did it because they knew that as a society and a democracy, we would not succeed unless we harnessed the talents of everyone, no matter who they were or where they came from. Today, under the conditions of this pandemic, the mission of CCNY is more important than ever before. We will not get through this crisis without everybody pulling together. And that means educating everyone in our society with talent. And so I say to you that your college, CCNY, maybe more than any other place in the country, was founded explicitly for this moment, to take the talents and resources of the whole people and harness them for the betterment of our society. So we will get through it. We will get through it with hard work, with support of our friends and our alumni and our donors, with a little bit of luck. City College will be as strong as ever at the end of this. So I want to thank you for supporting the Alumni Association. I hope you have a fantastic night at the gala. I look forward to seeing you all soon in person in this room as soon as it's safe to do that. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Vince. It's a pleasure to see you, and thank you again for being with us. Now, I am so very excited to begin this next segment. The Townsend Harris Medal is a preeminent award of alumni achievement. It is, of course, named after the founder of City College, Townsend Harris, established in 1933 by the gift from a class of 1906. Townsend Harris Medals are awarded each year at this event to alumni who have outstanding postgraduate achievement in their chosen fields. Candidates are selected from nominations by a special committee comprised of former recipients of the medal and is subject to final approval by the Alumni Association Board of Directors. Here are tonight's winners of the 2020 Townsend Harris Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 Townsend Harris Medal. Radha Blank. Radha Blank graduated from City College in 1997. She is an American filmmaker, a winner of the Sundance Film Festival U.S. Dramatic Directing Award. Miss Blank is also a performer, writer, and proud native New Yorker. Named one of this year's 10 directors to watch by Variety, Radha's feature filmmaking directorial debut the 40-year-old version has been hailed by critics as funny, thought-provoking, wholly original, and forever relevant. Hi, I'm Rada Blank. I'm a filmmaker, 
Uh, I'm a very proud Harlemite. I'm a really proud alumni of City College and an even prouder recipient of the Townsend Medal. I'd like to thank my family for all of their support over, over the years, my filmmaking community, and the selection committee for seeing me fit to receive such an honor. I was raised by a cinephile who planted the seeds of uh, cinema and storytelling in me very early. But it was in Professor Carlson class, uh, one of my first filmmaking classes at City College where many of these seeds were watered, where I received such inspiration in seeing films like Diamonds in the Night, Citizen Kane, and Cinema Paradiso, which has become one of my favorite films. Um, thank you, Professor Carson, for being an inspiration and for still pushing storytellers to explore um, stories on film. Um, so many of us wouldn't be here if it weren't for film enthusiasts and educators like yourself. So I'd like to dedicate this award to my mom, um, the first cinephile in my life, and to all future filmmakers, especially filmmakers of color. This is such a viable platform to tell story, to archive life, and to show the world, you know, who we are. So thank you to the selection committee at City College, um, all of the people affiliate, affiliated with the award, and all of those who saw fit, um, who saw me fit to receive this award. Thank you so much, and let's keep telling stories. In you, Rada Blank, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Robert Friedman. Robert Friedman graduated from City College in 1962. Mr. Friedman is a retired partner at Goldman Sachs. He joined Goldman Sachs in 1968 and was a general partner and member of the management committee. He served as the chief financial officer and as partner in charge of the Goldman Sachs Asset Management Group. He remained as a limited partner of Goldman Sachs until 1999. He has also served on the board of the Greater New York Councils of the Boy Scouts of America and on the board of the Ronald McDonald House in New York City. Mr. Friedman is the founder of the Myself Third Scholarship Fund in honor of rescue workers of 9-11, which since 2002 has provided hundreds of scholarships to worthy recipients applying to the City University of New York. I was born a few months before Pearl Harbor and grew up in the East Bronx in one of the earliest housing projects in the country. I am honored to receive this Townsend Harris Award for many reasons, not the least of which is that in honoring me, you also honor my father. My dad was an immigrant who came to this country in 1921 after walking across the Czech Republic with his mother to escape the Cossack hordes and the pogroms then in progress. He spoke no English, was desperately poor, and at the age of 10 was put into the first grade. Somehow he managed to obtain admission to the elite Stuyvesant High School, and then found his way to the same college that honors me tonight. City College is the most remarkable of institutions as we all know. For the, latter, for the better part of 200 years, it has welcomed immigrants without regard to race or ethnicity. And when I was 15 years old and I was accepted, I could not imagine going anywhere else. I graduated with a degree, with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, and in later years received my MBA also from City College. My sixth grade teacher, Mr. Broutman, taught us to put ourselves third after country and God. After 9-11, 
I was in awe of the rescue workers, the police, and the firefighters that put their lives on the line to save so many, and the people from all over the country that poured into the city to help their fellow citizens. I approached my good friend Matthew Goldstein, the then Chancellor of CUNY, with an idea that Matt helped bring to fruition. We created the Myself Third Scholarship in honor of those rescue workers who provided aid to those applicants who expressed the same love of country and a dedication to the kind of service exemplified by what we saw after 9-11. In the 18 years since, my wife Linda and I have been privileged to give out several hundred scholarships to the most wonderful students, mostly immigrants, as it happens, who have honored the halls of the various colleges at CUNY and, of course, at City College. When I think of my own fortunate career, having become a partner at Goldman Sachs, something I never dreamed could happen, I am humbled to realize that it was only because of my father's journey to this, the greatest country on the face of the earth, that such a thing could happen. And it was only because of this great institution, the City College of New York, that both a poor Polish immigrant and his son could achieve success without any regard to anything else but their own drive, ambition, and scholarship. Thank you so much. In you, Robert Friedman, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. J. Cherie Allen. J. Cherie Allen, M.D., received her bachelor's degree in psychology, magna cum laude, in 2011 from City College, where she was a Colin Powell Fellow. She graduated from Meharry Medical College. She is a National Health Service Corps scholar, currently practicing in a critical access hospital in central Minnesota. She completed her residency training at the Mayo Clinic. While there, she was a member of the Mayo Clinic Alumni Association Board of Directors, president of the Mayo Fellows Association, and recipient of one of the Mayo Clinic's highest student honors, the Barbara Bush Award. J. Cherie Allen is a board-certified family medicine physician who is committed to improving the health of millennials through primary care and preventive medicine. She is a member of the American Academy of Family Physicians Foundation Board of Trustees and assistant medical editor of a medical education podcast. Her own podcast is called Millennial Health. Thank you so much for this incredible honor. I'd like to congratulate my fellow honorees and thank you to the Alumni Association of the City College and the incredible staff for this wonderful event tonight. I'd especially like to extend a heartfelt gratitude to Elaine and Ellen Golding, who nominated me for this prestigious award. I transferred to the City College in 2007, and this institution has been a blessing to my life ever since. I'm so grateful to the Colin Powell Fellowship Program for the exposure to policy, for the psychology department where I earned my degree, and the pre-med program, especially Ms. Belinda Smith, who encouraged me to apply to medical school even when the odds weren't entirely in my favor. It is the greatest blessing of my life to live my dream as a physician. And though it's undeniable that healthcare is in turmoil as we're currently battling a pandemic, the Affordable Care Act is going up before the Supreme Court and our healthcare workers on the front lines are facing numerous challenges. We will press on and in the spirit of this incredible institution, and our founder, we will continue striving for better days. 
You know, I was born on the island of Jamaica and like many New Yorkers and City College grads, my family came in search of better educational opportunities. And so I'm grateful to my mother and grandmother who went back to school to become a nurse and a home health aide after migrating here. Their sacrifices made it possible for me to pursue my career. And so I'd also like to thank my extended family in Jamaica, my incredibly supportive husband, uh, the community I've built along the way, and certainly the City College of New York, because the opportunities that set me on my way all began here. Thank you again for this honor tonight. In you, J. Cherie Allen, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I am happy to have the opportunity. I'm Ellen Golding, CCNY 62 and 65, um, Class A Director on the Board of Directors of, of CCNY Alumni Association, along with my twin sister, Elaine Golding. I want to particularly have a chance to say tonight, congratulations to Dr. J. Cherie Allen, medical doctor, physician, frontline worker during this pandemic time. We thank her for her wonderful work, but we could particularly congratulate her on being a 2020 Townsend Harris winner. I can't think of anybody more deserving than Dr. J. Cherie Allen. We wanted to say particularly that her philosophy of life shows that she's the same young lady, just more mature than when we met her as an undergraduate at City College, when she had found, started her own foundation called WEST, acronym WEST, which stood for Women of Excellence, Strength and Tenacity, in which she discussed and worked with young women in the Harlem community to encourage them to do well in school and to set goals for themselves that are achievable and that she knows that they can do. So when she told us that when we met her as an undergraduate, that she wanted to do medicine, we said, we know you can because the Golden family, like you, father comes from Jamaica and began to do medicine. You came from Jamaica and you can do medicine. So she said she believed us and she certainly, certainly showed us to be correct. So in the background of the picture here is a picture of our family, the first two medical doctors in the family, our father and our brother, both of blessed memory, who I know send congratulations from their higher office today for her. And we also have two, a next generation of physicians, our nephew and our niece. And I know they are sending hearty congratulations on your winning the Townsend Havers Award from CCNY. And I'd like to read, close with her philosophy in which which is certainly um, coincides with her, uh, her early WEST foundation. At graduation, she said in the book of honoring black women in medicine called Against All Odds, on, on celebrating black women in medicine, Dr. J. Cherie Allen says, we are holding each other back by not sharing our stories. We need to create a comfortable environment for women to say, this is how I made it, and you can make it too. Thank you, Dr. J. Cherie Allen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Elaine Golding, the other twin, with the distinct honor of introducing Mr. Roy Eaton, 90 years young and 70 years graduate of CCNY Phi Beta Kappa Magna Cum Laude, with a wonderful career of which I believe many of you are familiar. Please Google him to find out more about all of his lifetimes. But I'll just try to mention a few. From the age of seven, Roy had already gotten a gold medal playing Chopin at Carnegie Hall. And as you know, you have to practice to get to Carnegie Hall only after one year of taking classical music, he was already able to get a gold medal at Carnegie Hall. That in itself is amazing. But age 20, he graduated from CCNY, Phi Beta Kappa, Magna Cum Laude, and also from the Manhattan School of Music, where he taught for some years. At that same year, he got the first, the very first 
Kosciuszko Foundation Chopin Award. He had a tremendous career from he was in his 20s at with R Young and Rubicon, Benton and Bowles on Madison Avenue as the first African-American to have an executive position in the creative department where he was responsible for many of the commercial, the successful commercial jingles for about 30 years. And after that career, he went on to have his own music company and went back to the concert stage. He has given, he's gotten many awards for his outstanding music. He's in the Advertising Hall of Fame. He's a 2007 Townsend Harris medalist, and he's also in the Communications Alumni Hall of Fame. We want to thank you, Roy, for all your wonderful creations and your wonderful gifts to all of us. And by the way, Roy's mother and our mother, who's in this picture behind me, holding my sister and me as babies, are cousins. So we have the distinction of having a genius in our family. Thank you, and I hope you all are enjoying the evening and continue to stay safe and well. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1970, Townsend Harris medalist and classical pianist extraordinaire, Roy Eaton. I am a, a proud and grateful CCNY graduate, uh, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, 1950. <laughs> Thanks to the magnificent uh, liberal arts education I received here, I have been able to successfully pursue many rewarding careers in my 90 years. I am the son of uh, uh, immigrant uh, parents from Jamaica who, thanks to the free tuition policy then in effect, were able to send me and my three siblings to college. Because of the free tuition policy then in effect here, I also won a scholarship from, from CCNY to spend my junior year in Switzerland at the University of Zurich. Thank you, CCNY, for all that you have meant to my life. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Roy Eaton, City College Class of 1950 and former Townsend Harris medalist. Incredible performance. Thank you, Mr. Eaton, for celebrating with us tonight. Welcome back, everyone. Now, I've been associated with the Alumni Association since graduating in 2005, and I believe in its mission of civic engagement and service. 
City is a cornerstone in my success, and I want to give back as an alumnus. I know many of you joining tonight are members of the association. And if you're not, please consider joining tonight. It is a great time to join. We have in the works lots of exciting new programs and changes in the organization. I know you won't be disappointed. Go to our website, ccnyalumni.org, to learn more and sign up. To those of you who are already members, I would like to personally encourage you to get involved. Join one of our affiliate groups for access to special events, social activities, and for many of the group's mentoring opportunities and alumni talkbacks. An affiliate is a group within the Alumni Association representing interests and educational specialties. The association currently has 15 affiliate groups. On your screen, you'll see a list of all current affiliate groups and chapters. If you're interested in getting involved, please email membership at ccnyalumni.org or call the office for more information at 212-234-3000. We look forward to seeing you at our next Zoom meeting or when it's possible again in person. The Alumni Association has a mission that is threefold. To engage alumni, support current students, and promote the college and its interests. When we talk about supporting our students, I want to acknowledge the mentoring programs of our business and economics, engineering, and architecture affiliate groups. However, sometimes it's just about the simple dollars and cents that the association gives to help our students accomplish the goal of attending college. I believe our scholarships, approximately 10% of our annual operating budget, hit at the heart of our desire to give back. In our program tonight, you'll see a list of the scholarships we offer on an annual basis, this year's recipients and donors. In keeping with tonight's theme, hashtag CCNY Dream Machine, we have with us tonight previous Alumni Association scholarship recipient, Tashian Kelly, class of 2011. Tashian is here to tell us her story on how CCNY was a step to her success and how the Alumni Association scholarship helped get her to climb that mountain. Tashian, thank you for being with us tonight. Hi, Dr. Sushian Kelly here, general surgery resident at the Rutgers University's Monmouth Medical Center and 2011 Alumni Association Scholarship recipient. I cannot say thank you enough to our CCNY family and the Alumni Association for making it possible for someone like me to become a physician. My mother was a single immigrant woman living in the Bronx, working as a security guard. She had two daughters with big academic aspirations, but we didn't have the resources or the knowledge as to how to pursue our dreams. As a result, I relied exclusively on our community for support. Thank you to CCNY, the Alumni Association, for all your support and contributions. I was able to graduate with top honors in 2011 from the City College of New York. Then. I entered medical school at the Icahn School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in 2014, where I graduated later on with my medical degree. Now, I am well on my way to becoming a surgeon. Thank you so much to our family for making this possible for me. It is my pleasure to reach back and support those of you who are now embarking on your journey to making your dreams possible. Thank you. Thank you, Sashian. Your success is inspiring, and we are so happy to know that the Alumni Association was able to assist you, even just a little bit, along your journey through CCNY and on to achieving your dreams. Like Sashian, we know that you, watching tonight, also have stories to tell, which is why we are partnering with Publishing Concept Incorporated to launch the CCNY Oral History Project. We want to celebrate you and the experiences you had on the CCNY campus, the experiences that shaped you and your life's course. I was a mother of four children, raising four children and a wife, and I needed to be close to home. Uh, I've always been a one to stretch out for my education and wanted a good school, and CCNY had an absolutely wonderful reputation, and it was a school that had, a, uh, had wonderful classes, that had good programs, and a lot of African Americans was going to that school from the community, and uh, it was just a wonderful place to be, and I loved every moment of it going there. I really did. I loved the campus. I just loved the, uh, you know, the ambiance about the place where it was. It 
that was located, it was close to home, and, you know, it was just close to my children's school. You know, if I had to leave there to go get them, I could. For me, for me, it was perfect. It was, it was perfect for me. It's a great time to get involved at the Alumni Association, and we hope you participate in this exciting project. Now let's continue with our honors. Our next Townsend Harris medalist is Charles Copeland. Charles Copeland. Charles C. Copeland earned a master's degree from City College in mechanical engineering in 1968. He is president and CEO of Goldman Copeland, the New York City-based consulting engineering firm that has re-engineered the infrastructure of many of Greater New York's most iconic buildings, including Grand Central Terminal and the Alexander Hamilton Custom House. A crucial energy innovator, he has created an extraordinary legacy, advancing vital engineering for New York's role as the arts and business capital of the world. Thank you for this enormous honor of receiving CCNY's Townsend Harris Award. It's an amazing experience. The world where I grew up, the first person in my family to go to college, could become involved with the infrastructure of many of the buildings in the greater New York area is amazing. They range from instantly recognizable landmarks like Grand Central Terminal to many other cultural organizations, uh, office buildings, healthcare, and institutions of higher education. This same world is one where I, having worked continuously from the age of 13, has worked with some of the finest people in the construction industry. Many of them for decades, like Vornado and its predecessor firm, the Mendic, the File Organization, and many others like Empire Realty Trust, etc. That same world is one where I was able to be captivated by a great CCNY professor like Dr. Gigi and helped me adopt a long commitment to energy conservation. That commitment enabled me to design in the 1970s an early rooftop solar system that along with other strategies helped set the stage for the federal enactment of PURPA which is the Public Utility Regulatory Policies Act. And that became a critical moment in alternative energy to the grid. Recently, <clears throat> I've been able to uh, lead our staff in the creation of a geothermal screening tool for every lot in New York to see how geothermal heating and cooling might work. And that's almost 900,000 lots. CCNY opened the world for me and gave me the skills to help shape it along with my family and other colleagues. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate this enormous honor today. Thank you. In you, Charles Copeland, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Lev Spiridov. Lev A. Spiridov is a 2005 graduate of City College. 
He also graduated from the University of Oxford, where he was a Rhodes Scholar. He emigrated from Russia in 1993 when he was 11 years old, and his mother, journalist and filmmaker Alexandra Spiridov, was an asylum client of Human Rights First. Lev is the director of the Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College. In addition to his work-related responsibilities, Lev serves on the boards of the Foundation for City College, Human Rights First, Concord Consortium, and on the selection panel for the Sloan Awards for Excellence in Teaching Science and Mathematics in New York City Public High Schools. Elements of Lev's life have been recorded in books, such as How to Raise an American by Myrna Blythe, After Eitan by Lisa Cohen, Life is in the Transitions by Bruce Spiler, and Out of Many, One by George W. Bush. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lev Sridoff, the proud graduate of the City College class of 2005. First and foremost, I would like to begin by thanking the Alumni Association for this incredible award and this recognition. Secondly, I'd like to congratulate my fellow award recipients and also congratulate the Alumni Association on hosting its first digital gala. Uh, 20 years ago, I entered the hallowed halls of City College and inherited the legacy of many of you, all of you have been there to support me along my academic journey, just like you have done for thousands of other students. We built our legacy upon your legacy, and we give our commitment to this city in the same way that you have over all of these years. City College was there for us before we even knew of City College. And now it is our turn to give back to our communities and to our home institution. As you can see from some of the photos I've shared with the Alumni Association, the friendships I formed at City College have now lasted more than 20 years and now transcend boundaries, whether they be territorial or generational. I'm proud to be a part of the City College family. I'm honored by this recognition, and I promise to carry forward the very legacy that you helped to establish in me. Thank you, and I hope to see you all back in the Great Hall next year. In you, Lev Spiridov, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Jeffrey E. Levine. Jeffrey E. Levine graduated from the City College School of Architecture in 1975. He is the founding principal and chairman of the Douglaston Companies, consisting of Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, and Clinton Management. Since founding the organization in 1979, Mr. Levine has directed the new construction or rehabilitation of thousands of residential units, including both affordable and luxury housing, student housing, hotels, senior living, health care facilities, and millions of square feet of commercial retail, office, and institutional spaces. Mr. Levine sits on the Executive Committee of the Real Estate Board of New York, where he received the 2018 Kenneth Garrity Humanitarian Award. He also serves as Chairman of the Jewish National Fund and is on the board of St. Mary's Hospital for Children. Jeffrey Levine currently lives in New York City with his wife, Randy, three children, and two grandchildren. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. My father, Irving, was in the Army at the time of the Korean War, and my mother, Irene, and I lived with my grandparents in East Flatbush. Upon my father's return from the military, we moved to the Linden Houses, a New York City Housing Authority project in East New York, Brooklyn, that I am currently privileged to be rehabilitating in connection with NYCHA's Permanent Affordability Commitment Together, or PACT program. After attending New York City public schools, 
I had the opportunity to further my education at the City College of New York School of Architecture in what was the former Curry Chevrolet dealership on 133rd Street and Broadway underneath the elevated train. At that time, a subway token was 15 cents, a pizza and a Coke were a quarter, and tuition was 32 bucks a credit. As the first member of my family to attend college, I graduated in 1975, and I began working for a prominent New York City developer as an assistant construction superintendent. And in a few short years, in 1979, I founded my own building company, enabling me to provide a wonderful life for my family. None of this would have been possible without my having benefited from the high quality education that the City College of New York has provided to generations of New Yorkers uninterrupted since 1847 through depressions, recessions, civil war, world wars, and yes, pandemics. I am profoundly grateful to be virtually honored along with today's recipients of the Townsend Harris Medal of City College and to be joining the list of distinguished alumni since its first award since 1933. Thank you very much. In you, Jeffrey Levine, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Herbert Rubin. Herbert Rubin graduated from City College in 1938 and from NYU Law School in 1942. As an undergraduate, Herb served as business manager for the campus newspaper. After graduation, Herb worked during the day and attended NYU Law School's evening division. He graduated number one in his law school class and became the only evening student ever named editor-in-chief of the NYU Law Review. Following military service in World War II, Herb taught at NYU and Rutgers Law Schools, and then became a founding partner of the law firm now known as Hertzfeld and Rubin. In addition to the New York trial and appellate courts, Herb has argued in almost all of the Federal Circuit Courts of Appeal, as well as before the U.S. Supreme Court. With his late wife, Justice Rose Lutan Rubin, he established and supports a renowned annual symposium on the rule of law in international practice. Today, he continues active litigation at the age of 102. Mr. Boudreaux, I thank you and the entire City College community for this cherished Thousand Harris Award. Congratulations also to my fellow awardees. I am an incurable optimist. My glass is always at least half full. In this disruptive time in which we live, I would like to offer my 102 years perspective on society's progress and promise. My start in life was in a Lower East Side old law tenement without heat, hot water, electricity, or indoor toilets. I owe so much to public education in the city of New York that I can still hear my South Bronx elementary school principal exhorting me to get wisdom, get understanding. My lifetime has witnessed tremendous change. Being a student at City College during the Great Depression and the intellectual ferment of 1934-1938 forged my character and my career in powerful ways. The passion of student debate throughout the campus remains unforgettable. 
Certainly that passion framed my career in the law and emphasized the importance of always working for social justice. My civic life included so much change as well. World War II was a major catalyst for increased commitment to social change and broader participation to ensure corrective action. In 1954, Brown against Board of Education opened up the batteries for millions of Americans to exercise a voice in government. Racial, gender, employment, and public facilities discrimination are now illegal by, by statute. Many of my own professional efforts have focused on promoting equity in the legal profession and in the judiciary. I'm happy to say that those efforts have had positive impact. In my life, if I've achieved anything of merit, as the, Supreme, as the Townsend Harris citation so generously asserts, those achievements reflect in no small measure the impact of this unique institution of higher learning. The pace for those reforms has been too slow and their scope is still too narrow. But over time, certainly over the course of 102 years, there has been relentless progress. I thank you again, and I continue to pursue wisdom and understanding. I have confidence that the rule of law will overcome the stubborn inequities that still plague us as we proceed onward and forward. City College plays a key role in the fight for such social reforms. There's no better reason to be proud to be a City College graduate and a 2020 Kansas Harris awardee. A thank you once again. In you, Herbert Rubin, your alma mater has particular reason to rejoice. Cheers to all our Townsend Harris medalists. What an amazing lineup. Thank you for your inspirational stories and proof that CCNY is an engine of social mobility, a hashtag CCNY dream machine. It is my distinct pleasure now to introduce to you an alumna and fellow Harlemite who has graced New York City stages and now runs her own production company, Blackberry Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Berry, class of 1976, performing a piece of poetry by fellow alumnus Siku Sundiata. Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of 1976, Stephanie Berry. It hurts me to my heart to see you like this. Underworld, underweight, impossible to be with, impossible to leave. I must approach you the way I approach music sometimes, late at night and by myself. When people who can't understand are long gone, like the famous who want your infamy without your tragedy like the rich who want your treasure without your pain. Too hard to catch up and too hard to follow. I keep looking for you anyway. Over by Harlem River Drive, where years ago you went underground, leaving two dead policemen in your trail. Then backstage at the old Apollo Theater, where we used to be waiting, pulling on the stars, begging them to kiss us like they sing. 
I walk around with this photograph of you at the African American Day Parade, looking like a 33rd degree mason, a Eastern star, an old African, a parliament funkadelic, a grand and flowing feather in a Marcus Garvey hat. But in your ashy, sunken face, I see a fallen of flesh from bone. I see your red hands, your blue eyes, protruding ribs, where once I entered and lived. You, you were my living room, my address, and my home. What remains the same is how little, how much you have changed. You don't belong to Malcolm or Langston anymore. No point telling me whether you left them or they left you, since the whole thing was out of your hands, since you have no more control over death than you do of life. You make it and you shape it every day. Maybe that's why you never sleep. Maybe that's why the rings around your eyes are thin lines between love and hate that you can enter and leave at any point. The definition of a circle, which brings you right back to where Bird plays and Billy sings to Malcolm and Langston's words. The songs, the speeches, the poems, the songs, the speeches, the poems more alive now than then. But you're coming back, you're coming back. It's your power and your redemption. Oh, Harlem, oh, Harlem, oh, Harlem. I have searched every place, every body, every name I have ever been for you. If not your beauty, then your ugliness. If not your rhythm, then your story, oh Harlem, oh Harlem, oh Harlem, oh Harlem. The CCNY Art Alumni Affiliate Group is proud to announce its first virtual art show, live now through November 30th. Featuring pieces from CCNY alumni and current students, the show provides a safe way for you to view, enjoy, and appreciate art from the comfort of your home. A glass of wine is optional. Select pieces are for sale with proceeds going directly to the artists. Visit our website, www.ccnyalumni.org events for more information and links to access the show. Congratulations to all of you celebrating a milestone anniversary as a graduate of City College. We wish we were able to welcome you back to campus this year to celebrate. And while we wait for the next opportunity to show you the Great Hall in person, we thought it important to give thanks for what this great institution means to you, to all of us. We asked alumni celebrating their 10th, 25th, and 50th anniversaries, what does City College mean to you? Here's what they had to say. Without a doubt, CCNY means the world to me. It gave me the ability to accomplish my goals. Looking back as a retiree, CCNY was my best decision. I am honored to be an alumna of this great college. City College means a strong liberal arts education, knowledge, and when I was there, protest, which opened up the school and led to the kind of diversity we see today. My education at CCNY gave me the knowledge and skills that enabled me to have a successful career in the New York City public schools. CCNY means access and opportunity to me. I also see City College as my foundation builder in a concrete path to social mobility. City College is such an important part of my life. It is where I learned that life's tangled mess could be cut through by a critical knife that I was given through my coursework. 
it's where I realized that divides that we have between each other um, are just preludes to finding bridges. Um, it is where I readied my hands to shape my future. Congratulations to our reunion classes. We look forward to welcoming you back to campus once the pandemic is over. And now for the Finley Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 John H. Finley Awards. As the third president of City College, John H. Finley championed the concept of dedicated service to the community as the first principle of good citizenship. To this end, he introduced the use of the ancient Athenian Ephibic Oath as part of each commencement ceremony. Established in 1948 by the class of 1918, the Alumni Association presents the John H. Finley Award annually to a New Yorker who has proven exemplary and dedicated service to the city of New York. To help me present this year's Finley Awards, I'd like to welcome Aldo Leon, class of 1972, and Jerry Eskenazi, class of 1959. Hello, my name is Albert De Leon. I'm a class of 1972 at CCNY. In my last year at City, I was editor-in-chief of The Paper, one of three different but thriving newspapers at City College. Since those were well before the days of social media, we got our news from the regular newspapers of the time, which would be the New York Daily News, the New York Times, the New York Post, and the Village Voice. In reading those newspapers, we were, of course, led to the works of Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill. And they were reading them was sort of like going to graduate school for us. Uh, I'm happy to have nominated both men for the prestigious John H. Finley Award. Pete Hamill. William Peter Hamill Jr. was born and raised in the Park Slope section of Brooklyn, and his love of the city never left him. Pete started in journalism at the age of 25. Over the course of nearly 40 years, Hamill worked at the New York Post, the Daily News, the Village Voice, and New York Newsday. He served briefly as editor-in-chief of the Post and later as editor-in-chief of the Daily News. In addition to his newspaper work, Hamill wrote extensive pieces for various magazines, including New York Magazine, The New Yorker, Esquire, Playboy, and Rolling Stone. The topics ranged from politics, the wars in Vietnam, Nicaragua, Lebanon, and Northern Ireland, to America's urban riots of the 1960s. Very much a Renaissance man, Hamill also wrote about boxing, baseball, art, and contemporary music, winning a Grammy Award in 1975 for the liner notes to Bob Dylan's album, Blood on the Tracks. Selected pieces of his journalism were published in two books, Irrational Ravings and Piecework. In 1998, he published an extended essay on contemporary journalism titled, News is a Verb, Journalism at the End of the 20th Century. Hamill published two volumes of collected short stories, The Invisible City, a New York sketchbook, and Tokyo Sketches, and a personal and historical portrait of Manhattan called Downtown, My Manhattan, that covered his reporting for the Daily News on the destruction of the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Hamill's highly respected, best-selling 1994 memoir, A Drinking Life, 
chronicled his journey from childhood into his 30s, his embrace of drinking, and the decision to abandon it. His best-selling novels, Snow in August, Forever, Tabloid City, and North River, are considered to be some of his finest works of fiction. Hamill received the Ernie Pyle Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Society of Newspaper Columnists in 2005. In 2010, he received an Honorary Doctor of Letters degree from St. John's University and was presented with the Louis Auchincloss Prize from the Museum of the City of New York. In 2014, Hamill received the prestigious George Polk Career Award. The John H. Finley Medal is not the first honor Pete Hamill has received from City College. In 2014, he was the first recipient of the New York Media Legend Award from the Communications Alumni Group. Hamill and his longtime friend and fellow journalist Jimmy Breslin were the subjects of the Emmy Award-winning 2018 HBO documentary, Breslin and Hamill, Deadline Artists. Pete Hamill passed away on August 5th of this year at the age of 85. Ladies and gentlemen, to receive this posthumous award, please welcome Pete's widow, Ms. Fukiko Aoki. My name is Fukiko Aoki. I am Pete Hamill's widow. Also, I am a writer. When Pete received a beautiful letter from the City College of New York, uh, that was the beginning of July, and he was already pretty weak, and didn't realize this was a notice for an award. Then I received the email, and I realized that City College of New York would like to present Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill for the John H. Finley Award for their works and service to the city of New York. I remember clearly the day when I told Pete, and he was sitting on the couch, and he opened his eyes wide and gave me a big smile. He was flattered and said, of course, I accept it. This is such an honor. What a great idea to have it share with Jimmy. Pete told me that it was a special award for him because his younger brother, Tommy Hamill, had graduated from City College of New York, where his classmate was a boy from Fox Street in the South Bronx. His name was Colin Powell, and he liked the seven Hamill kids. All five of Pete's younger brothers uh, attended the City University of New York. So Cuny holds a special liberance in the Hamill family. Since this past spring, like everybody else. Pete and I lived under the tremendous and frightening threat of COVID-19. He was most vulnerable person for this virus. His age and his underlying medical issues waved a big red flag We are doing very good, but sadly, as Pete entered a brownstone entrance in Brooklyn on August 1st, he took a fall. I rushed him to the uh, Methodist Hospital, and he needed operation. Unfortunately, he was not strong enough to survive it. In the dawn of August 5th, I got a phone call from the hospital. The doctor said, I'm sorry, your husband's heart has stopped. 
I remember he added, No many people ever die in the hospital where they are born. It was true for him in New York cemetery piece who have wanted. Now it's still hard to believe he is gone forever. We were finally separated after 33 years of marriage. He now sleeps peacefully at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, just behind the big tombstones of both to read. Today, I know he will be so honored that he has received the Finley Award. Pete must be smiling with Jimmy today. I'm also honored to receive Pete's award for him. Thank you for this amazing tribute to my late husband. Thank you very much. Back in the day, I mean, you would buy the papers, see what Jimmy Breslin was saying, you know, we'd have him. These guys were like superstars. They were everywhere. People saw it as the voice of true New Yorkers. Hamill was like a poet of New York. Once there was another city here, and now it is gone. The lost city of New York. Jonathan Alter, John Block, and Steve McCarthy, the three producers and directors of HBO's Breslin and Hamill Deadline Artists, celebrate the larger-than-life personalities and courageous writing of these two journalists in their Emmy Award-winning documentary. Here tonight, taking a break from a book tour promoting his newly published biography of President Jimmy Carter, his very best, Jimmy Carter, A Life, is best-selling author, documentary filmmaker, and television producer, Jonathan Alter. Thank you to City College. I am delighted and honored to take part uh, on this occasion, uh, and especially pleased that you are honoring the legacy of the late Jimmy Breslin and the late Pete Hamill. Uh, they were the subjects of a film that I co-produced, co-directed, uh, that's on HBO called Breslin and Hamill Deadline Artists. Uh, I had met uh, both Jimmy and Pete uh, more than 25 years ago, but didn't really get to know them until uh, the last uh, three and four years of their lives when uh, I and my partners spent uh, a, a really quite a lot of time with them uh, shortly before they died. And uh, Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill uh, represented the best of uh, local journalism and the best of what we should all aspire to do in journalism, which is to speak truth to power and to deal frankly and with great reporting energy with uh, racial injustice, uh, economic injustice, and all of the other great issues of our time. But they did so with a flair uh, for narrative, for great storytelling that uh, uh, should be an inspiration, I think, for all of us, not just in journalism, but in life, in terms of bringing to bear uh, a, um, a lens, focusing a lens on our world uh, that sticks up for the little guy and that inhabits uh, a view of the world where truth comes first, whatever the consequences. And so uh, we, we wanted in our film to convey what fun it was to be in the presence of Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill and what joy it was to read their work and to try to indicate not just what we've lost with their passing, but with what they can inspire us to do, uh, to give voice to the voiceless and uh, 
look to the future uh, with a sense uh, of hope and faith that speaking that truth to power can make a difference uh, even in a dark time. Thanks very much. Jimmy Breslin. James Earl Breslin was an American journalist and author. His newspaper career started with the Long Island Press, which served Queens and Nassau counties, where he worked as a copy boy in the 1940s. He then went on to work as a reporter and columnist for the New York Herald Tribune, the Daily News, the New York Journal American, and Newsday, among other publications. He was known for his newspaper columns, which offered a sympathetic view of the working-class people of New York City. Because of this focus, he was awarded the 1986 Pulitzer Prize for commentary, quoting the citation here, for columns which consistently champion ordinary citizens. In 1985, he received a George Polk Award for Metropolitan Reporting. In addition to his award-winning newspaper work, Jimmy Breslin was also a best-selling author. His works included the books Can't Anybody Here Play This Game?, which recounted the trials and tribulations of the hapless 1962 New York Mets, and The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight, a tragicomedy about two warring mafia gangs in New York City. From 1982 until his death, Breslin was married to former New York City Council member Ronnie Eldridge. Breslin passed away on March 19, 2017, at the age of 88. Ladies and gentlemen, to receive this posthumous award, please welcome former New York City Council member and current host of Eldridge & Company, a weekly television talk show on CUNY TV, Ms. Ronnie Eldridge. Thank you, Mr. DeLeon. Jimmy would be very thankful that he's being honored, or grateful, I guess would be better knowing him. He's being honored by the first free college of New York City and the first college of the great city university. And then on top of that, with Pete Hamill, his longtime friend and colleague with whom he shared many adventures and opinions, and the very top of that with Joe Namath, a player that he loved to talk about and reminisce and tell us all that he was his friend. So I think you've made a very good choice. I mean, it's not really up to me, but you've picked three people to honor that truly brought the city passion, that truly got them excited, uh, Jimmy and Pete, because they talked about the issues, really deep issues, sometimes in very, I guess, poetic uh, form. They talked about problems that still bother us and still are here and unresolved. They were, I think, really leaders in the kind of community they represented. And Joe Namath, nobody could have brought the city more excitement and more thrills and more passion into what they did. And also with his life outside, that he was kind of a normal guy, a normal young man. So I think um, City College was very smart and its alumni association in its, it's even older than I am. And I went to school right next door at the high school music and art remembered lovely evenings at Lewiston Stadium. But thank you so much on behalf of Jimmy. And um, I hope that you continue to be interested in people like him and in people like Pete and Joe. Thank you. Somehow, Joey from Beaver Falls doesn't sound as impressive as Broadway Joe. Of all the great athletes that have made it in New York, from the Babe, to Willis, to Gifford, to Messier, none acquired a New York persona, a certain cool as our Joe Namath. We know so much about the man and yet so little. 
why this is the New York Jets quarterback who dared to guarantee his team would win Super Bowl III while 16-point underdogs. But that guarantee, which was broadcast far and wide, simply was a response to a heckler at a dinner. We'll win, I guarantee it, Joe said simply. And the Jets did, in what was actually the first championship called the Super Bowl. We honor Joe with the significant John H. Finley Award, which in the past has gone to people named Rockefeller, Roosevelt, Belafonte, Sills, for making New York ever greater, but never before has it gone to an athlete. But in Joe Namath, we have a man who has embraced New York and made it better. His Joe Namath Foundation has contributed to more than 25 charities based here. It specializes in helping children as well as doing neurological research. And as an athlete, well, I'm still struck by my first coverage of Joe when the New York Times asked me to be the Jets beat writer. It was an exhibition game in Phoenix, but the first time the ball was snapped to Joe and he went into his back pedal, why the whole stadium stood in awe, expecting something spectacular. This was a phenomenon I witnessed wherever we went, that first snap into his hands, it was Excalibur in the hands of King Arthur, a rock in the fist of David facing Goliath, a bow in the fingers of William Tell, Something magical in the face of danger was about to happen. I recall our first meeting, Joe already was a legend. What to say to a legend? So I introduced myself and said, Joe, I don't know anything about football. He laughed. Now when he introduces me to someone, that story is the first he brings up. But I think that also says something about our honoree. He has retained the best qualities of Beaver Falls and New York, empathy, charity, and the sense of humor. City College, which has sent so many of our kids out into the broader world, now honors one of New York's heroes, a man who truly deserves the word legend. It has been my honor to nominate and to present Joe Namath with the John H. Finley Award. Joe Namath. Joseph William Namath is a former professional football player who was a quarterback in the American Football League and the National Football League during the 1960s and 1970s. In 1999, he was ranked number 96 on the sporting news list of the 100 greatest football players, the only player on the list to have spent a majority of his career with the Jets. Born in 1943 in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, to Hungarian immigrant parents, Namath was a standout high school athlete in football, baseball, and basketball. He elected to take a football scholarship to the University of Alabama because his mother wanted him to get a college education. Between 1962 and 1964, Namath quarterbacked the Alabama Crimson Tide under legendary coach Bear Bryant, leading the Tide to a national championship in 1964. In his autobiography, Bryant called Namath the most natural athlete he had ever encountered. Namath began his professional career with the New York Jets and was named the AFL Rookie of the Year in 1965. In 1969, he led the Jets to a win over the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl III. Three days prior to the game, he famously assured the fans, we're going to win the game, I guarantee it. He played for the Jets for 12 seasons before finishing his professional career with the Los Angeles Rams in 1977. In 2017, Namath launched his own foundation to expand and diversify his charitable giving. The Joe Namath Foundation supports numerous children's charities and neurological research. Its website is joenamath.org. A recent HBO documentary about Namath's career includes a segment on his continuing ties to New York City. He has also presented the Lombardi Trophy to Super Bowl winners many times, most recently to the New England Patriots in 2019.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe Namath. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, hello, folks, uh, alumni of City College, family and friends. Uh, I came from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, and it's a rather diverse little town, you know, a lot of immigrants, steel mills, people of different colors and all, and that is part of why I love being with you tonight. New York, when I came to New York and saw the diversity in the big city, man, uh, it, it, it's been with me since, and I love New York. I've been there going back 55 years already to now. And sure, Joey came from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, but my first time in New York, I was standing on Broadway and the lights were bright and I felt like a jerk, a complete jerk, standing out on Broadway theater hour, man, people buzzing around. I'm standing in a football uniform. And that picture was on the cover of a magazine and a teammate saw that magazine cover when it came out and called me Broadway. So to some of you, I'm Broadway Joe. What I do really appreciate is how we in New York have stuck together through some tough times, man, through some very difficult times over the years. Uh, we can talk about the the garbage strike when the trash was piled up 12 feet in the air and you couldn't see across the street. Uh, we can talk about uh, the awful incidents that we've had with the World Trade Center and lost so many friends and family members. Uh, we could talk about the taxi strike, you know, uh, uh, the blackouts, but the way the people of New York came together during those trying times is what stood out and what stands out today, the unity of the people in New York, even with the diversity. In 68, we were fighting about the Vietnam War. There were demonstrations all over the place, uptown, downtown, but we came together. We got that all straightened out. Well, whenever I uh, heard about this award that uh, John Finley's name is on and I'm fortunate enough to accept. I mentioned I was a football player, right? I didn't get to New York on my own. I didn't get to be Broadway Joe on my own. I've learned that it's a team effort, not just on the field between the lines, but out there every day in the streets and at home. It's collectively a team effort. That's why we help the communities that we help whether it be in New York, uptown, downtown, east or west. That's why we help the charities that need help in taking care of children that come into the world, that, oh man, uh, premature children, that people that have had accidents, uh, the folks that are less fortunate than we are. That's what this is about. And I've been able to work with people for the last 55 years. I didn't think it up. They came to me and asked me to help out. And I said, wow, yeah, this is great. The first time I did help out was when Jonas Salt came out with the vaccine to beat polio. And here what happens to me, a, a, a friend that worked with the Jets came to me and asked me about leading the March of Dimes walk in New York City. And I talked to my daughter and she and I got out there and we walked 10 straight years with 20,000 people. Oh man, every year, that unity that we got together to beat, to beat polio. So we can do, we can overcome things. This virus that we have going on right now, man, let's get together. Let's listen. Coaches are doctors now. Let's listen to the doctors. Let's do what's right and thank God every day that we're healthy and that we can help out the less fortunate people in the communities that need help. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Jerry and uh, John Finley, man, nice job. Good evening. 
My name is David Covington, and I'm honored to serve as the executive director for this alumni association. Congratulations once again to our Townsend Harris medalists, Dr. Allen, Radha Blank, Charles Copeland, Bob Friedman, Jeff Levine, Herbert Rubin, and Lev Spiridov. Honoring alumni accomplishment and service in and of itself is an important practice for our alumni association. But your award and participation serve a higher purpose tonight. It is a shining example for our young alumni of just how powerful a city college education is, how much you can achieve when focused and driven, and how giving back to your community is an important part of achieving a worthy, meaningful, and happy life. Thank you also to Joe Namath and the families of Jimmy Breslin and Pete Hamill. It's an honor to have you be part of our night. We are proud to recognize the exemplary and dedicated service of our Finley awardees to the City of New York, as it serves as inspiration for us all. And if you can't tell, this event is an extremely important part of our annual programming, which is one reason why we pressed forward with planning a virtual event, despite the challenges presented by COVID-19. In addition to serving as our primary method of honoring alumni achievement, it has historically been an exciting social event and a critical fundraiser. It may be a little different this year, but it is no less important. And in some ways, it's even more important. We, like many nonprofits around the city, have been affected financially by COVID-19. And as a reminder, we are an independent alumni association and do not receive funding from the college. If you haven't already, please check out the suggested donation and sponsorship levels to the left-hand side of your screen. Help us continue an unbroken 167 years of service to our fellow graduates, our students, and this great college. No donation amount is too small. And if you've already donated, thank you. If you are participating in our silent auction, be sure to check on your items as there are just a few minutes left. There are some pretty great options too, including a, a signed copy of Jonathan Alter's new book, uh, a Joe Namath signed 1969 ring shadow box, a set of City College Wedgwood dinner plates, it's a collector's item, and a beautiful print by art alumnus Steve Somerstein, and this among many other great items. So before I hand it back to Sean, just a quick thank you to our presenters, staff, volunteers, and the many individuals who worked on this first ever virtual gala. Thank you to all of you who have watched, toasted, dined, and lounged with us this evening. We appreciate your participation and look forward to your continued participation in the oldest alumni association tied to a public college. City College is a true dream machine, and I'm proud to be part of the City College family. Sean, back to you. Thank you, David. Wow, Joe Namath, Pete Hamill, Jimmy Breslin, what an incredible evening. I want to thank the generous organizations and individuals who supported this event through their sponsorship. On the riders for the event are listed on the program page of your journal. Congratulations once again to each of our Townsend Harris medalists. And I want to remind you to join me and participate in this incredible network of alumni. Become a member, serve on a committee, attend an event, Post your success stories online at hashtag CCNY Dream Machine or tell your CCNY story through our new oral history project. However you choose to stay involved, stay connected because we are stronger together. Thank you for joining us tonight for our program. Please wear a mask and stay safe. Now stick around for some entertainment. We know you're going to enjoy this. I am very pleased to introduce from the class of 2016, Berta Moreno and her jazz trio.
baptized that Lord can sever. Heal me out of my turn ever. Lavender, my 